Hi, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. Now in this one, um, I am making something I uh, sort of <laughs> was thinking about I wasn't going to be making because I'm trying to make things that are seasonally appropriate, okay? <laughs> But, you know, when a test the core comes around, you know, sometimes you just love what you see and uh, you go and test the pattern. Now, because um, each to stitch is on the Northern Hemisphere, uh, they are releasing a pattern that is meant to be used in summer. And I'm in winter, but today there's 29 degrees. Hey, I can wear a cami on, on, <laughs> on a winter day that's 29 degrees. So I jumped at the chance to test uh, a cami pattern by each to stitch is very beautiful it's called crystal cove and it's a cami that's designed to be worn by itself or like a base layer under things very beautiful um, it's got like a relaxed fit bodice with some side bust studs and at the back it crosses over with like a curved hem that overlaps uh, it's very very beautiful cami top it's designed to be made in woven fabrics and the awesome thing it has is that it gives you the option of um, cup sizes. So there's A, B, C, D and double D cup sizes there that you can choose. Uh, there is also a chart there that you can see to see where you fit, you know, within the cup size range. And you basically have to measure your upper bust and your full bust. And depends on the difference of, of those is, is the cup size that you fit into. Um, my upper bust is 38 and then 41 so it gives me a 3 inch difference which fits into the C cup and that's actually consistent with any pattern that offers cup sizes <laughs> at least for me and also my bra cup size although it might not be the same for you you might use a different bra cup than you do in clothing so you've got to measure yourself really well so um in the Facebook group for the test, I found myself there with one of my good sewing friends. Her name is Fanny and she has a sewing channel as well called So Many Fabrics. And she started her vlog late last year. And she always has beautiful makes to show, beautiful fabric. She lives in Spain now. And she does really nice honest reviews about the makes that she does and of the fabrics that she uses. So um, we thought uh, we could do a collaboration and both make a vlog about the cami each so it's showing like a different side to the <laughs> to the garment so you can head over to her channel to see a very detailed step-by-step -step sew along of the cami top she made um she made her versions just as the pattern recommends so everything in the pattern instructions you will find there now what i've done <coughs> and what ken is from each to stitch motivated us to do was be a little bit creative in the way that we finish the edges on the cross back on the back that crosses over and even in the instructions there is a little a little paragraph there suggesting different ways that you can add your own spin to it you know to the edge <laughs> and that's what i did uh, my two versions i made um with the back uh crossing and the hems in a different way and that is what i'm going to show you well, um, Fanny and I, we both made the same size. We made the size 10 with the C-cut bodice. Now, um, because this is a relaxed fit, if you're in between sizes on the charts, I would recommend you go to the smaller size because in my first version, um, I made like a size 11. That doesn't exist, <laughs> but I basically cut right in between the size 10 and the 12, all the way down the side seams, like I cut that size. And that was my first version. Um, I thought that was a little bit big. I had to take it in a, t a tad on the side. So on my final version, I ended up setting, uh, settling for the size 10, which just fits me better, you know, like the way I, I like it. So I'm going to show you my first version. I made out of this brick colored uh, silk. It's very flowy, very nice. You see the cami has a V-shaped neckline there. Very beautiful, little thin straps. The straps are cut on the bias, very beautiful thin straps and there is a little facing in there but you can see all that in Fanny's channel. Um, now for my test version, I decided to finish it like that. Little ruffle, it's tiny, it's about less than an inch wide and it goes all the way down and around the hem and across to the other side. So the little ruffle is everywhere. Now I'm going to set this flat and explain to you in a bit more detail. 
Okay, so here you can see the cami top. Um, I've placed the back on onto what you can see there. You can see that shape there. So on the basic version, you just do a really narrow road hem around the curves. Um, I just got a really long strip. So what I did was measure this, all this up to the side seam. That amount that I measured, I multiplied it by two and I did that for two, you know, because there's two ruffles. So I cut those. Now this there, the edge of my ruffle is actually the selvage of the fabric. Um, luckily this fabric, the selvage, it didn't have any prints or weirdness. It was just like the end of the fabric, but you can't tell it's a selvage really. That means I didn't have to hem it, so win there. So my strip that I cut was double the length of this measurement there. I gathered it and I attached it on, if you can see here on this side, and then I overlocked all the edges. I pressed in this way. So I could have pressed the other way, but I thought that it turned the curve better if I left the seam allowance facing this way. Um, so I attached the ruffle on there, I attached the ruffle on there. Then on the front side, I measured the length of the front, bottom of the, of the hem, and I cut another strip of fabric that was double the length of that. Now, um, then I attached them onto here, to the sides. Now, why didn't I measure a whole ruffle that was the whole around, you know? Because then you've got a ruffle that's just too huge and hard to work with. If you're anything like me and find making ruffles a bit hard, <laughs> I mean, getting them to see even and things like that. So that's why I decided to have three ruffles, one there, one there, and the other one, and just attach them there on the side seams. I think it turned out very nice, looks really nice. It's a very, very tiny ruffle. I wouldn't have made it any bigger than that. So for this one, I made that size 11, I told you. Um, it fits fine. I only had to bring it in here about 10 centimeters, a little bit in, like half a centimeter on each side, just before the side bust that starts. Now for me, the height of these bust darts were perfect, but you may need to raise them or lower them according to your the height of your bust apex. For me, they were the, the darts were fine. Very nice top. Um, I didn't think I was gonna like it so much in this fabric because this wasn't one of my favorite fabrics from the stash. And I know why, it's because it's a solid. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's a solid, you know. But yeah, this, this is beautiful and I can match this with a bunch of other stuff. So it, I'll get a lot of wear out of this and love it. I just really like this a lot. Now the final version I made, um, I chose a print viscose from my stash. And I really like it. For this one, I made the size straight 10 with a C-cut bodice. No modifications to the pattern. Um, the only thing I modified to both was to shorten the strap by about an inch. But, you know, that's individual preference. And it was actually recommended in the pattern test to adjust the straps to the length that was comfortable for you. So, yeah. This is my second version in the size 10. Very beautiful. Um... Now this fabric came with these like prints, like stripes, but flowers. So I decided to place this main piece there in the middle with that red flower, like a focal point there. And then the, the thinner sort of stripes going on the side. And on the back, I tried to get that thicker thing there in the middle as well with the thinner ones on the side. And I managed to pattern match a little bit on the sides. Little bit. Not perfect, but it looks pretty good. Like you can see this leaf going to the other side. <laughs> now this was cool because I had a lot of fabric to work with. So I was able to move around the patterns to try and pattern match as, as much as I could. Super nice. Now um, to finish the edges of this cami top, I used bias binding. To show you how I did the bias binding, I actually filmed myself doing the process while I was doing it. So I'll show you that now. I've done the side seams there. I've done the bust starts and this is one open flappy bit there. And to finish off the edges here, all the way around the back and around the hem in one continuous piece, I have attached bias binding. So I've pinned it all the way and I'm going to do a narrow 
stitch right there into that little ditch you know where the thing is folded the base binding all the way around then I'm going to clip around the curves and turn it around and then from the inside it's going to look like that and I'm going to go the extra mile and I'm going to hand sew this onto there with this really really fine hand stitching around because this print on the other side with different colors and I don't want a blue stitching there to ruin that so I'm gonna go the extra mile and do some hand sewing as well I've sewed on the base binding as you can see there I've already clipped all around the curve so that this will fold in nicely so uh, I'm gonna take myself much later <laughs> to the TV, sit down comfortable and sew this on by hand. But before I do that, because that can wait, I'm going to um, do the overlap that you're meant to do on the back and there's marks that I've made on the fabric. So I'm going to do that overlap there and I'm going to sort out the facings. So here you can see the back part where the crossover back is and the curved hem and here you can see the bias binding from the inside. Now as you can see I sewed on the bias binding in its width. I didn't trim it out like when I do armholes because you don't need to do that for this. Um, the curves here are very very nice and uh, long curves so using the whole width of your bias tape is going to be fine. and. Um, so basically I measured all the way around and sewed it all in one continuous stitch and this is how it looks because you already saw the whole process but that's how it looks on the inside, it looks very nice and I think it's a really nice way to finish a fabric with really nice drape, there's no visible hand stitching on the outside either and I just like the way this looks. So I hope that was useful for me finishing that uh, the back with the bias binding. Even though you can't see it on the outside, it does make for a really fine finish. You know, like the curve's going to turn around really nicely and I like the way it looks. It also gives it a bit more weight to the hem. So I've got that cami top on now. You can't really see much because, the you know, the wall behind me. <laughs> but I love the way that the back crosses over without it opening up. Like, you're not gonna have an exposed back or at all. I tried turning around, swishing it, like waving it around and you can't ever see my back. It's, it's nice and covered, you know? So I was outside in the garden and I took some pictures of these, uh, both versions, so those are coming in. So I am absolutely in love with this pattern because it has a very nice fit, like everything is perfect, there's no gaping, the bust that here on the sides gives it great shaping, I mean it's just great if you have like curves and stuff, you need those darts to be in your pattern. Um, lovely, lovely. At the back, it doesn't show, it doesn't go that low either, so it's enough coverage for what I'm comfortable with. So in the future, um, I will make the straps a tad bit wider so that they do cover my whole of my bra straps. Just a teeny, teeny bit wider. It's not hard to do to modify this part of the pattern to get like a thicker strap. Um, I'm going to be making more of these for sure. And they use such small amount of fabric. I mean, less than a, less than a meter for sure. <laughs> um, so it's a great, great staple to have. For your hot weather and it's so hot today i can't believe it I, i've been so cold in the last few days and now we got a really hot day so that was really cool and i'm really happy to show you this so um this pattern released today it's called the crystal cove cami by 
itch to stitch patterns and I am linking down below in my description box the link to the pattern and the link to Fanny's uh, vlog about this um, cami. So if you want to see all the steps, the facings, everything, you can head over to her channel. So please go and watch her channel so you can see her two versions that are beautiful and um, yeah, go and leave her a comment too. Thank you for watching and um, I'll see you very soon in the next video, probably two days from now. Um, give me a like if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss any sewing tips with me. Cool, see you, bye!